This occurred in 2019, near my home in northeast Wales, next to the Highlands in Denbyshire. This was a new home for us. We are living in an old house that no one had lived in for over 30 years. It was built in between two old yew trees. We have four acres of woodland behind the cottage that backs onto a wood that leads to the larger forest. When we moved in, I started to explore the land beyond the garden, and I worked out where I was going to put the polytunnel. The plan was to create a forest garden and to clear space for things, as it's pretty wild and thick with bramble bushes and so forth. As soon as I went up to the first level, and look to the left where it's quiet heavily wooded and dark, I felt immediately uneasy. This was odd for me because I love the woods, forage regularly, and have always felt at home out and about in wilderness. A few days after clearing the space for the polytunnel, we had a bonfire to get rid of all the brush. It was damp so the fire made a lot of smoke, until it eventually got going and burnt itself down. It was getting dark and I needed to put the tea on so I left my partner to keep an eye on the fire. A good 20 minutes later, he came running into the house saying something was sliding down the bank towards him, but he couldn't see a thing. He could hear it and could tell it was getting nearer and nearer. He was really genuinely scared, as he couldn't see anything. The next thing that happened was when I was in the hazel coppice, just chilling out watching the squirrels. All of a sudden there was a big whoosh sound next to me, that came from behind me. It was as if something big had flown past my head and I could feel the wind on my face as it passed. I had really expected to see a buzzard fly down or perch in one of the trees, but there was nothing at all to be seen. That really was impossible, because of where it would have had to fly to exit the wood. I would have seen it. It wasn't long after this, that I finally saw, the creature. I was walking my dog in the late afternoon, at the beginning of October 2019. I had decided to go down to the River Dee, which has a small wooden bridge across. It is on an ancient pathway, near our old church, not far from our cottage. I got to where there is a big oak tree on the bank, that looks down into a ravine, which the river flows through and where the bridge is. That trail then leads off onto another pathway, which takes you to an old farm. As I looked down towards the bridge, I could see something big and black moving down that path, running towards the bridge from the direction of the old farm. I actually thought about the cows that roam free here, and you know how they can be when dogs are around. But as the thing got nearer, it became clear that what I was looking at was jet black and resembled a giant wolf. But, it was walking upright, on two legs. It had big broad shoulders and arms. The waist was thin compared to the rest of the body. I cannot say that it had canine legs, or front-facing knees, but it was definitely upright, just like a human would be. It stopped at the end of the path, and just stood looking towards the bridge. Its chest was heaving like it was heavily breathing, just waiting there until it got its breath back. For a few seconds, I just stared at it in disbelief, and then all of a sudden, it was gone. A few weeks later, I cleared a path near a fallen spruce, that leads to a gate at the end of our wood. It wasn't too much work, and after clearing brambles, bending and snapping a few branches out the way, it was done. The next day, I went out to use the path I'd cleared. At the entrance to it, was a hazel branch, that had been bent over, and was being held down by a broken log. It was literally blocking the path I had made. I went and got my partner, and asked him what he thought. To me, there was no way that could have happened on its own. He had to agree. I have not moved the log, or used the path, because I feel something doesn't want me going in that part of the wood for sure. Last summer, before I saw the creature down near the bridge, I decided to get a dog from the local rescue. I took him up in the wood to explore, and have a bit of fun playing with a stick. I didn't really know why, but he kept running off, as if to chase something. I thought it was squirrels. When I caught up with him he would just stand there barking, not at the tree, but at thin air. I thought this was very odd, and day by day it got worse. He would just stand near the house, 
barking at the fence and gate that led to the wood. Sadly, he never settled down, so we had to find a quieter home for him. We do have a new dog, but now she too is experiencing things on the land and at home. I was walking down the road one dark cloudy morning, on my way to work, when I just happened to turn and look behind me. On the other side of the road was a huge, strange looking dog. It was completely devoid of hair and was unlike any other breed that I had ever seen before. Luckily it hadn't noticed my presence, as I was standing on the other side of the street, halfway down the road. I quickly walked off at speed, as I really didn't fancy being a chew toy for this unusually large looking canine. I found it rather odd, that the dog was roaming around the neighborhood alone, especially at this time in the morning. When I got further down the road, I looked back to make sure that it wasn't following me. I breathed a real sigh of relief as there was no sign of it. So I continued on walking. As I rounded the corner to Jetty Marsh Road, I was completely shocked to see the same dog, a bit further on down the road straight ahead of me. I immediately stopped dead in my tracks. I was really confused by how this unusual looking canine had managed to get ahead of me like that. The dog turned its head and looked right at me. I could see that it had glowing red eyes. It then growled. That growl was menacing. I thought, oh shit. I was terrified by the sight of this rabid looking beast. I slowly began to back up while keeping my eyes completely transfixed upon it. Suddenly, this dog began to slowly dissolve. I mean, it just turned into a large puff of smoke and disappeared. I stood there in awe, with my mouth wide open. What on earth had I just witnessed? I was left scratching my head, trying to understand what I had just seen. I then carried on walking toward the area where it had been only moments before. When I got up to the exact spot, I saw clawed paw prints in the dirt. That gave me an icy cold shiver, which down my spine. My attention was then drawn towards a small tree. It was shaking violently back and forth, as though something invisible was shaking it with a lot of force. I think that it was trying to scare me away. Well needless to say, it had succeeded in doing so. I ran off down the road as fast as I could. I just kept on running until I reached my place of work, all the way out at King Station. I don't normally scare easily, but this particular morning was very terrifying. I stopped walking into work for a while after this encounter. I would instead only take a taxi or get a lift into work. Years on after this event, I'm still not entirely sure what exactly I witnessed that strange morning. But I know one thing for sure. I never want to experience anything quite like that ever again. I decided to rent a cabin, way up in northern Michigan, for a week with my sister, Tanya. My sister is a rider. This was what she needed, because she hadn't ridden in two weeks. So off we went. It was late May and still quite chilly, but we didn't care about the weather because we weren't there for sunbathing on the beach. The cottage was rustic but recently remodeled. It was located on a small pond and surrounded by thick woods. Our cottage was the last one down a long dirt road. The cottage owner had cut in several trails, so guests could enjoy hiking in the woods. On the first day, as we were unloading our luggage from the car, and a man and his mom walked up the driveway. They introduced themselves and told us they owned a house that was down the road. They went for walks a few times a week, and they always passed the cottage. The mother, Linda, had mentioned that her husband passed away a few years earlier. So I told her that I lost my husband Josh, a few months earlier as well. Linda looked sad for me, but her son, Brendan, had a smirk on his face. That really creeped me out. Linda seemed to notice this as well and said, okay let's leave these ladies to unpack, and then said their goodbyes. I was unnerved by the way Brendan looked at me, and I noticed he kept looking back at me as they walked away. On the first day, we just hung around the cabin. The next day I went for a walk alone so Tanya could get some writing done. 
I chose the path the owner said was the easiest. I had been walking for 10 minutes when I heard the sound of a small animal moving through the underbrush. It sounded to be the size of a rabbit. So I stopped to listen. When I stopped, the rustling stopped. I happened to glance back and I saw the shape of a human, standing behind the thicket. I thought it was Brendan, so I turned and kept walking. I was almost halfway through, when I saw a tree about 30 feet in front of me. The tree was completely surrounded by the same thicket. I saw what again I perceived to be a naked Brandon. I couldn't see clearly because he was shrouded in darkness, but I saw him perched on the bottom limb of a tree. He just crouched there, staring at me. I could see one hand holding the limb he was crouched on and his other arm was wrapped around the tree trunk. Now that I look back, and I know what I was looking at then, I can't believe I thought it was Brendan. A day or two later, I was finally able to pull Tanya away from her laptop. We were on the porch to watch the sunset. We distinctly heard a wolf howl from the other side of the pond. We agreed it was really close, but we weren't too worried. We were more worried about the mother bears. We were told by Linda and the cabin owner, that we needed to keep the bear spray on us at all times, because the cubs were very young and the mothers were really protective. About 10 minutes later, we heard an animal screaming. It was so loud we covered our ears. Tanya said this is too close to nature for her, and went in to use the bathroom when she came back, she pointed to the wood line. Then she screamed. What is that? I saw the shrubs shaking as an animal came out of the woods with a baby deer in its mouth. The baby wasn't just a newborn. We looked at pictures showing various ages and it was probably two weeks old. We are not country girls, so please don't get on me for being wrong. Anyway, Tanya said she did not want to see that, and went inside. I stood there looking at this animal. I was certain the fawn was dead or I would have done something. At least, I think I would have. What? I don't know. Regardless, I was trying to figure out what this animal was. It was walking into the open from the woods. It dropped the fawn from its mouth and started sniffing it. I was fairly certain that this was a very large wolf with a case of the mange. I thought mange because its fur was thick around the neck like a lion's mane. The rest of its fur was thin, almost bald in spots. Its rear end was bald and I didn't see a tail. It looked almost deformed, because the back end sat way lower than the front. The animal seemed almost mesmerized by the fawn. It stared and sniffed at it, then it pushed it forward or over with its nose. Then it picked the fawn up by the mouth and started shaking it side to side violently. It started biting into the midsection and when it lifted its head to chew, I could clearly see intestines hanging out of its mouth. Now I believe I let out a sound at that point, because it looked at me with a surprised expression and ran about 10 feet to a large tree. It turned around and, literally, stood on its back legs. Oh my gosh. I realized this was the thing I saw up in the tree. I could clearly see the eyes were rust-colored and they looked lit up. They looked as if they were glowing from the inside. It was starting to turn dusk. It just continued to stand there behind that tree. It seemed to be apprehensive, but it would stare at me and then it would look towards the fawn. At one point, I thought I saw it lift its lip and the whole muzzle started to vibrate. Like it was trying not to bare its teeth. Finally, it got down on all four feet and started walking slowly to the fawn. When it was almost there, it swung its head in my direction and let out a low and menacing growl. At the same time, it bared its teeth. This animal was at least 400 pounds. It could be even bigger but I'm afraid that the naysayers will call me a liar. This animal was at least three to four times as big as my German Shepherd all the way around its head was huge. But what really terrified me was when it sneered at me and then went down for the fawn. Its teeth were at least three inches long, sharp and jagged. 
When it got to the fawn it picked it up in its mouth and took off at a fast pace. We didn't go for walks after that. We barely left the cabin. On the last day, on our way out, we drove over to that same tree. I got out and stood beside where it stood. I can say without a doubt, it was well over seven and a half feet tall. We drove past Linda's house, but I asked Tanya to turn around. I wanted to tell Linda what we saw. Linda was genuinely concerned and seemed shocked to hear about what we had seen. She appreciated the fact that we thought enough to stop. When we got home, we called the landlord of the cottage. He said straight away that we were warned to carry bear spray. So I just left it at that. I figured he thought we wanted our money back but that wasn't the case. So that's our story. I'm pretty sure that wasn't a Bigfoot. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to help us grow. Thanks for watching.